Hey, this is Jeff again, part three of uh, SimSamurai.net's How to Build a Trim Wheel for Cheap. Um, part one, I showed you all the tools necessary for the job, and part two, I kind of did some more explanation of how all this craziness fits together, because it is a lot, actually, once you get into it. Um, definitely takes a couple weekends to get accomplished, but to be able to do this for under $100, I think it's well worth it. Um, so now let's move on to actual soldering and getting the wires onto the potentiometer. Um, Basically, I purchased um, a little board called the 2090-2090 from Desktop Aviator. This is a USB plug-and-play interface device. Uh, great little unit. It's, I think, the most expensive one they have. It's 50 bucks at Desktop Aviator, but definitely highly recommended because uh, you can hook up analog potentiometer to it. Um, you can hook up rotary encoders that are like the you know, dials on your radios if you want, and then you can also hook up... Uh, single pole, single throw, momentary push toggle switches, up to 20 I believe, which is a nice little feature. Also comes with these uh, you know, little terminals that you're going to solder wires onto, which then you know, snap onto this before you plug it into your computer. So basically this is the most expensive component out of the whole project, um, but this is what you need to get all your switches working. Um, so basically, uh, like I had said, you wanted to purchase a 40 or a dual switch, uh, 15 and 30 watt uh, soldering iron, this little uh, pair of extra hands here, this could be picked up for Harbor Freight. I think this is maybe five bucks. Um, you want your solder, which is uh, 6040 rosin core at uh, 0.032 diameter, really small. Uh, and we need something that small for the small wires we're gonna be using. Basically the wires, as you see here, this is already soldered and wired. I've already done this already, but um, this came out of this printer that I was telling you about, an old HP printer that had just died on us. And so I, instead of just taking it to the trash or a recycler, I first uh, dismantled the thing, pulled all the plastic gears out of it, and pulled what little pieces of wire. This is great wire to use because uh, you know it worked in the printer at some point um, and can be recycled, keep it out of the trash. And this is basically looks like 26 inch gauge, really small stuff. You got to be really careful when you strip this uh, so that you don't lose any wires. Um, but it's probably only got like maybe six or eight pieces of little stranded uh, copper at that but um, makes great wiring for the project that we're using and so basically on a potentiometer like this uh, for the speed brake lever and this one for a trim wheel um, I went uh, you know red all the way on the left white in the middle and then the ground um, excuse me the ground all the way on the uh, yeah, left position so red on white red on the right white in the middle and ground on the left. Um, I, I don't think it has to be any specific order like that, um, but I just like to keep things color coded and organized, so I did it the same way with this. Basically red on the right, white in the middle, and then uh, green all the way on the left. Um, so I wired those up, so as you can see these two pots with the trim wheel and the speed brake lever are done. And then I also have a flap switch. And this flap switch I actually got off of eBay, um, which is from a Piper Seminole, so this is real aircraft hardware here. Uh, but I had to take the switch components off from the real aircraft. I went to uh, Radio Shack and got what's called a momentary uh, single pole, single throw, but this is an on, off, on switch, meaning it's off, it's in the center position, it's on momentarily when I click it that way, on momentarily when I click it that way. This is gonna be much like your little clicks on your CH throttle, uh, CH products throttle or yoke. Same thing probably with SciTech. Um, but basically from Radio Shack you get this. This one actually has six pins on it. Um, I could have wired this from either side because the center one is the ground and, and the ones on the outer complete the switch. So for this I needed three wires. I used white in the center and then a green and a green on each side. And so basically you want to strip these using the smallest uh, hole on your stripper here basically use about maybe a little less than a quarter inch of wire on each of the connections. You let this heat up. Be very careful, uh, even being careful. I burned myself a little bit with this last night. The whole stem gets really hot, can really give you a third degree burn really quickly. So you got to be very aware where you position this. I did this on a glass table just for safety's sake. You don't want this to be on anything that uh, like a, you know, uh, a tablecloth or anything, a fabric that could catch on fire because uh, these do get really hot. And then it comes with this nice little stand. Be careful because with this sitting on this like this, this little stand will also get very hot. Um, so again, you don't want to have this sitting on a tablecloth, rest it like that because this alone could potentially catch the tablecloth on fire. Um, so basically, you know, I just used about a foot of wire. 
Again, this is three strands for each of them, three strands here, three strands on the uh, brake, uh, uh, speed brake lever, and uh, three wires on the trim wheel potentiometer. So each are about a foot long. Carefully strip the wires, and then basically using this little connector, I would clip the connector in here, you know, so it's held on like that. And then very carefully using these little micro uh, tools that I've gotten from Harbor Freight, and I carefully wrap the wire around. You can actually do a straight solder, you know, wire on top of the post like that and solder it. Um, I've got pretty skilled hands and have done this a couple times. So basically, I, you know, use about uh, you know three sixteenths to a quarter inch of of wire, and then carefully wrap that around each post to make sure it's nice and tight on the post, and then just apply just enough little solder to make the connection. Um, these are the, probably the smallest posts I've ever soldered, so it takes a little time, a little patience. Um, you know, just just be careful when you're doing it because you can't have any solder from one post touch the other. So my clearance in here is probably, you know, less than a sixteenth of an inch in between each post. So you got to be really careful when you solder these not to over solder them. Um, same thing on the other sides. This is obviously a little, a little bit easier to solder onto that joint. So as you can see, what we have completed, this is be, these, are, these three are ready to now be plugged into the uh, desktop aviator board, flap switch, speed brake lever, and trim wheel potentiometer. And so that's it for this phase. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this so you can see what it looks like assembled. Um, just be really careful when you're soldering. Again, uh, you can buy solid core wire that's 24, maybe 26 gauge. That will work too. Uh, it's kind of like, I think, called doorbell wire, uh, really small. But if you have an old printer or something like that laying around that's been collecting dust in the closet, feel free to, you know, get out the screwdriver and take it apart and, uh, you know, gut some components out of that because you will find wire like this in it that works great. And again, uh, you know, you want to look for gears to actuate your trim wheel anyway, um, which can also be found on eBay. But again, if you have an old printer or something like that laying around, you might just find what you need in there. So I think that is it now for part three, and we will move on to part four and uh, get this thing assembled. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.